Greetings gamers, and happy Thanksgiving. Sorry this episode has taken longer than usual, but it is a wild time of year with school assignments and the crazy holiday season at work, and editing. The editing for this episode has taken a long time. I've been working on it off and on for a while, and I decided, you know what, let's just go ahead and put up part one for now, and I'll wrap up with part two, the last few games, later. That way I can go ahead and get an episode up, and... Oh, also, I decided to devote a few extra minutes to obscure the aftermath in this episode, because I got a lot of cool footage for that game, and I didn't want to cut it all out. So, hope you guys enjoy, and off we go. Okay, apologies for the analog setup here, but I don't have a capture card, so we are going to be working with a slightly low-tech, but serviceable solution. This is where my 7 d would play, and I thought for this new segment, I kind of, um, actually, you know, do a little bit of gameplay for the games. Go back and do some of the games that I, uh, that I touched on before. The, uh, just a quick look at it, which is a beautiful little TV game. Great TV. So we already did Monohime, so let's try a little Kasuke. I really like his special secret art. Uh, I didn't do the whole thing. I normally did a spin slash, but I guess that's a different one. There we go. It's because of the sword. It depends on what sword you have equipped. That makes sense. And here is Target Terror. We will press A to begin to make the game happy. As you can see, you have three different levels split up into three stages each. So, let's rock. Let's rock. <laughs> Gotta love these FMV sequences. And here's the actual gameplay. No. Sorry, my playing is probably going to be a little bad because I'm trying to shoot around the tablet, which I'm using for filming, so... Yeah, I'm probably going to be shot a lot. No. But, um, yeah, as you can see, the digitized graphics are kind of cheesy, but... <laughs> I actually no. find them amusing. I think they're quite hilarious. Say something red, I have to shoot it. Of course, as in most shooting games, you don't want to shoot the innocents. Well, I'm just crawling back off the screen. That was great. I'm going to shoot this little girl. Gun now, which is pretty awesome. Whoa, right off the bat, we got some guys with rocket launchers. It's probably also worth noting that uh, this game is actually based on the Target Terror Gold edition of the game, which was an enhanced version in the arcade over the original Target Terror. Grenade launcher, which is a lot of fun. Always gotta love an exotic variety of weapons. But yeah, that's basically <laughs> uh, target terror. Finally, we have the nuclear plant. But yeah, that is basically the gist of target terror. A charming game in its own special way. So this is Space Raiders. I actually haven't played this one before. Uh, again, it's for the GameCube. Um, it's got a really long opening F and V of the space bugs attacking the humans. Not nice. <laughs> As you can see, they're kind of mauling them a little bit. So, we'll see where this is going. 
All right, so here we are. Basically what you learned from the introductory FMV is that all three of the main characters lost people that were important to them. So that's kind of the setup for the game. You have Justin, Ashley, and Luigi. Here we go. That was Ashley. Apparently you can kind of like duck and cover. Only have grenades. Nice. There we go. I'm gonna it now. And here's the first boss. I mean, yeah, this is kind of repetitive, but yeah, there's something oddly addictive about it. I actually kind of like it. And as you can see, now we've wandered into Resident Evil 2. <laughs> This is stage two. I also make them small if you get hit by their poison. And here's her special move, which is actually pretty neat looking. And here's playing through with Justin. I like his vest, it's the um, original Space Invaders, which is kind of cool. Move. Oh, neat. So they all have different specials, that's awesome. Grenades are pretty much the same though. It's the third character, Naji. It's kind of the slowest, but I'm guessing the shots are probably the strongest. Yeah, I like this. Um, it's actually really growing on me. Um, having three different characters helps the replay value, although like I said, it is a bit repetitive. You do have to have a fondness for those arcade style games, but um, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this actually. This was definitely worth the five bucks to pick it up. Glad I added this one to the collection. So here is Obscure the Aftermath. One complaint I do have is that it forced me to dig out a nunchuck. It would not let me use my classic controller, so boo! It's pretty nice. It lets you do drop in, drop out uh, two player mode, though. That's pretty nifty. I always thought that urban legends were fairy tales. But two years ago, I attended Leafmore High, the old and respected education. So this is how you start the game. And then I guess leave through the door. And if you hit the plus button, you can switch back and forth between the characters. Which is kind of nice if you're playing single player. Uh, and you come to, and you're here. And you've got to try to figure out why you are. Your first weapon is this baseball bat. Um, and the whole premise is that these uh, plants, these flowers specifically, um, are what's the cause of all this trouble. Uh, they said in the cutscene that uh, everybody on campus had been making tea with the flowers for a month, which, yeah, probably a mistake. Here, it lets you practice out in this awfully bloody environment here, uh, the swinging of the bat. You can swing the Wii remote with the Z held down. So as you can see, I'm in a creepy old uh, rundown hospital building, and uh, there's blood running down the walls. I mean, really, presentation-wise, this is not bad looking for a Wii game. They try to do some cool little atmospheric effects like that, too. Like that, too. It's actually pretty well done. Auto aim system can use a little work, but we'll get it. Not cool. Okay, it was scripted. Never mind. It's been too long since I played this. I forgot all the details. I'm sure there's somewhere I'm supposed to go and do a context sensitive action. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
full of soda, and I'm feeling That's all better. Much better. Or energy drink, rather. Not a bad game to follow up on Halloween with, actually. And here's our other dynamic duo. Sorry, I don't take orders from people who call my friends bimbos. Hmm? Okay, so I've moved this box over so I can climb up on the roof and get to the party. There's the hockey stick. And you have to sneak in through the window. There's the nefarious flowers doing their dirty deeds. And now we're inside. kind of cool. You have to uncover the code. There's like an engraving on the desk. Well, let's see if we can get her a weapon too. Alright, that's more like it. Four. Alright, I put in the code on the safe that I got from the desk and got a gun. Very nice. So yeah, all in all, this is a pretty pretty decent survival horror game. I enjoy it. Um, more than worth the five bucks I paid for it. Uh, excellent two-player game also.